Hi again. Um, I felt an intuitive prompting um, as I was awakening this morning to talk a bit about um, my past. So it's not really something present, but it's kind of relevant. And um, it's regarding mental health crises. And um, I've experienced a few. <laughs> Um, and I'm, you know, now at a point of, you know, I'm well beyond um, these crises. But I, I felt to talk about it in a way that um, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with crises like this. Like, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Um, it's very common with spiritual people. And it is possible to work through it all, you know, to really address it. But the reality is, is like, you know, you've got to go step by step, like, you know, and, and pull it all apart um, each tiny bit by tiny bit. And um, so, you know, initially it's all quite daunting, but, you know, what's that lovely saying? A journey of a thousand um, miles begins with one step and that's all you can do. So um, there was like this turning point in my life about, um, <clears throat> it was around 2009, um, I call that like my personal Armageddon time. And um, it was that first step where I just realized, you know, my entire life I was living in Sydney and in a you know, horribly um, abusive situation, traumatic situation with, um, you know, both in my workplace and personal life. And I just dropped everything and left the city. Um, I, I had a vision, a voice just came to me when I was, you know, I was absolutely at rock bottom and a voice came and it said to me, um, it told me that a tsunami was going to hit Sydney and I asked the voice when and it gave me this date which was about a week or so later and and I was like oh my god and so you know in my mind you know I that that night I just packed up I had you know I just thought what I do I even had a vision of where to go to even though I'd never even been to the region that you know I, I knew I was supposed to go to <laughs> Um, which is known as the Northern Rivers region of New South Wales. But, um, and then the next morning I woke up and, and talked with a friend about it and, you know, it was pretty obvious that it was an emotional tsunami, the, that's what it was about. But nonetheless, it was still, you know, it was so real and, and I knew exactly what the message was, well, it was kind of like, you're going to die if you stay in this life, in this city, in this lifestyle for another second longer. So a week later, I'd gotten rid of all of my worldly possessions and um, fit what I could in my car, including my cat. And I went, I just drove north and, you know, just with nothing, nothing to go to. Like, yeah, I just really threw all caution to the wind. So eventually um, I ended up, and it just happened quite synchronistically, I ended up settling in that region that I'd, I'd received the vision of where to go. And, um, and I began my healing journey and it had to start with physical because physically I was, you know, chronically, chronically sick and, and I had to address the physical first and, and I got, you know, it didn't take me too long. I really sort of, I got back on track. But, you know, I had no concept or idea of how to address, you know, the mental health issues. And I didn't actually see that they were there either. I just, um, I continued to smoke pot as a way of just like escaping the problem um, because, you know, for many reasons, like A, like I just had no idea how to, what to do, how to do it. And, and um, you know, my MO was, has been to escape, to run away from problems. And um, 
and that's through drugs, escapism. And also um, I lived with sort of this attitude that mental health means there's something wrong with you and it means like you're crazy, like it's a bad thing. And so I w uh, that was sort of indoctrinated into me, particularly in um, the school where I was teaching children with mental health issues. Like it was, yeah, strangely enough. Anyway, so um, not dealing with mental health issues and within maybe six months of, um, you know, really getting myself physically back on board, um, I ended up going into experiencing a full-blown psychosis. Um, you know, some professionals would like to say it was drug-induced. I'd say, you know, the pot didn't um, certainly exacerbated the problem, but I don't believe it was, I knew it was just like this enormous mental vomit, you know, just... It was a complete and utter identity crisis. Like I, I couldn't work out even the crisis itself. Like involved me trying to fix, you know, while I was in this state, trying to fix all of these things that I couldn't fix. You know, all of these relationships and and problems and people and and I just remember, like you know, I, I took on this responsibility of like retelling the story of everything and everybody who had been a part of my life. Like I'm talking so many people, including, you know, every child I'd taught as well. Like, you know, it's lots. It, it was absolutely massive. And um, so there was like this pressure, you know, and it was a self-imposed pressure to, I had to sort it all out. And I was, you know, I was doing it in a very loving and beautiful way. It was almost like dream time stories, you know, retelling these stories. And, but it was um, too much. It, it was just realistically too much to rewrite every single story of the world around me. And meanwhile, where am I in that, you know? And I, I actually could not, when they finally got me into hospital, I could not even tell them what my name was. You know, they kept asking me and I'd say, I've played with my name a lot. You know, I wasn't originally Neptune Rainbow Dreamer, but, you know, I'm there just going through these names going, Penny? No, no, no. Penelope? No. And, then, you know, being terrified of saying what the surname was and and then the new names I was trying out. Like, it was, you know, true complete identity crisis so um luckily for me it just sent me it that crisis set me on the path of finally working out well you know I need to I need to get some um, professional help here and and um, so you know I began the journey like you know the, the main part of it involved using um, a psychologist um, who I still I still am in contact with and and um, and going through you know experiencing CBT cognitive behavioral therapy and just you know reframing everything and you know it's been it was just you know I'm talking years and years and years of work of working through all of it and um, you know, I was diagnosed with, um, well, you know, the psychosis, so this propensity for psychotic episodes, and I was diagnosed with chronic um, PTSD, which sort of occurs when, you know, when you're experiencing a trauma day in, day out, like you just get so patterned into it, and it's not like one single explosion thing, it's just like, you know, just this constant behavior that just keeps playing out day after day which is the reactive behavior for the trauma that was being the abuse that was being directed towards me um and chronic depression and yeah just the whole lot and um you know my spirituality was definitely keeping me going the whole time and um and eventually you know Eventually, I just sort of reached a point, 
and it was sort of after I'd gone back into a relationship and interestingly this particular relationship I'd say it it represented like almost like a relationship with um, a fallen being that I'd, I'd been very closely connected with and I think the masters describe this personality type as like a benevolent narcissist and and yeah this woman that I was in a relationship with was very much a benevolent narcissist you know they're sort of um you know doing some sort of good in the world good I'll put it in bunny bunny years but there's just the whole time it's really just about the self it's about you know getting something getting acknowledgement getting power getting attention whatever it is like and that's that was what the long-term abuse I, ha I experienced was and then it just came into this condensed relationship with um, this woman who's was a benevolent narcissist um, you know living that world of yeah looking like she was a good person and 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 but you know desperately trying to project that protect that image um projecting it and protecting it and, um and then just unleashing yeah the moment the moment it came to where i realized like you know i really 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 have to end it here like then you know all hell was unleashed towards me like yeah i've never experienced such Oh, well, I have. But, um, yeah, the, just the level of negative projections that were just unleashed towards me and very, very publicly, it was horrible. But I had to learn from that experience to not defend myself um, was, you know, the main, the main thing. I just had to allow it. I realised there is nothing I can do. Like, you know, even in defending myself, it's not going to change this situation like I just have to leave it be and let people believe what they want to believe if they want to believe you know the horrible things she was saying about me then so be it you know what can I do about that but it was very hard it was very hard on the ego and and so at that point I realized like I can't do this alone I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble here um, so that's when I just cried out to God and I suppose it was the masters and just said that's it you know I I don't trust myself in relation with in relationship with other people and um, I don't trust other people and how they're relating to me like I just I, I don't know how to do it I just I surrender I have no idea how to do this um, and that's where you know the journey with the masters began even though i didn't officially start um, studying their teachings through kim for a few couple of years after that but um it began there and so you know within the space of it's now you know 15 years 15 years or so like I have healed so much you know I've still returned to these to the patterns you know where I, I do still experience PTSD episodes um, sometimes it generally comes through my body um, like when I was not so long ago I was returning to Sydney and that's where the bulk of the trauma was experienced. Um, I, I, I physically started experiencing like a lot of the symptoms that I had while I was actually there. Like I was dealing with a lot of endocrine de deficiencies, like, you know, because I was in this fight and flight mode. So, you know, too much cortisol was, was being released and, you know, and, and everything, every single hormone was just releasing sort of so much energy and then I'd just be so depleted as well and so all of a sudden my body started doing that automatically as I was traveling to Sydney like you know I, I was so weak and dizzy and and um you know I had it was awful like you know just experiencing the same physical 
symptoms and no test like even my hormones were testing normal like no test could show what was really going on and I realized oh this is psychological like you know my body is remembering like I haven't I haven't sort of I knew I had to go there to heal this so I knew I just had to go and face it and when I actually drove through the city and oh, it's never fun driving through a city especially in an old slow bus like this one and um, and when I arrived at my destination, which was lovely, right by the beach, but I was experiencing full-blown panic attack. And honestly, I don't think I've ever experienced a panic attack before. I've, you know, experienced a lot of things, but that was major. And um, it didn't take me too long to settle down. I just, I knew what to do. Invoke light. It's all good. Invoke lots of light and get down on into the elements and sit on the beach and just, yeah let nature heal and let the masters um, bring through the light that was needed. Um, and yeah, there was just one other element with the mental health crises that I thought I'd talk about too, is that I have on many occasions experienced um, what's known as suicide ideation when thoughts of suicide came into my head, into my mind, um, and it was usually, you know, like a voice encouraging me, you know, to think about it, to do it, to go through the, you know, just to think about it constantly. And anyone who's experienced suicide ideation would know, yeah, it's, you know, might give you ideas on, you know, how to do it. It might give you, you know, take you through this, you know, should I or shouldn't I? And then, oh, what about these people? What about my cat? Yeah, you know, just, it was just millions of things. And the final time when I experienced that was uh, a couple of years ago, actually. And I was sitting on a beautiful beach and the voices came and started you know, I, I was, it had been building for a few days, but, you know, I was thinking about suicide again. And all of a sudden, you know, I looked at, out at the beautiful beach around me and I just went, what am I doing? And I realised, you know, I was like, okay, A, I'm in a crisis right now. And B, um, <clears throat> I knew that it wasn't really me thinking these thoughts. I knew it was demons and dark forces planting, like psychically projecting these thoughts into my mind. And I really wanted to let people know that when this, when, when you ex, if you experience suicide ideation, it's not really you. It's, there is nothing natural in us that we want to die. Like, you know, there is actually what's natural in human beings is that we do want to live. We do have this inbuilt mechanism to, we want to choose life, you know? It's not natural to want to kill the self. Um, it's coming from another source and these, these thoughts, these ideas are being constantly bombarded against us. And it only affects us if there's something, there's something in us we haven't healed yet. Um, a trauma that we haven't healed yet. So, you know, and I I, I got to work with um, resolving that trauma. And, you know, I think I'm still going with it, although I know I'm not going to experience suicide ideation again because I've got, like, the core part of it, um, and I might talk about that some other time. It's very much linked in with the primal trauma. Um, and also... I'll attach a link for it in this video that if you experience um, a spiritual crisis, a mental health crisis, I just 100% recommend um, getting the spiritual crisis toolkit uh, through Kim and I'll attach a link for it because it has, it contains dictations and it contains rosaries which are invocations that you read out loud and they will help you. They're from um, Archangel Michael, who will help to rebuild your power, um, you know, bring you back into your power until you're ready to manage it yourself and he protects you from all of those demons. And Mother Mary, who 
who um, does like the nurturing with you also. So um, I'll leave I'll leave the recording there. So that's the story um, that you're not alone if you've experienced mental health crisis, whether it's current or in the past, and it is possible to work through it all. But just you know, know it's a long, steady journey, and you just you've got to follow your own intuitive promptings um, on how to how to do that and. Um, I hope some of the things I've talked about might give you some ideas and pointers on how to manage that.